Anyone else tired of telehealth? Hello? Okay. Hey, I am a licensed clinical social worker and substance abuse counselor, helping therapists to become better therapists. And today I have a good one for you. This is going to be an online therapist routine. Now, 2020 was a mess. We all know that. It has been particularly amazing how mental health professionals have all rallied together and providing services to their clients both near and far. There have been amazing work that, that was done in 2020 and there continues to be work that will go on via telehealth, via televisits, whether you're using DoxyMe or some people were using FaceTime or Skype or Zoom. Or it really has been a learning curve. It's really been an adjustment for a lot of clinicians because we are taught not to bring work home it's instilled in us it's drilled in us as far as boundaries are concerned now we are having therapists bring their clients home with them that's essentially what has been done we are inviting clients into our most intimate of spaces with knowing in the next room there's a pile of laundry there <coughs> it's very intimate like it's very intimate like I have tips that I'm going to share with you as to how to be productive and how to take care of yourself during this time because it's 2021 and it seems like telehealth could go on and on and on. So let's get right into it. Tip one, get up at least one hour before your first session time. Treat this as a normal work day where you would get up, start your morning and get ready for work and go into the office if you will. Get up brush your teeth, wash your face, shower if you haven't showered the night before. Do whatever it is necessary to help you be the best you. If you don't eat breakfast, have a banana, have a yogurt. You're at home so you don't have an excuse as to why you can't eat breakfast or as to why you can't eat or as to why you can't go in the kitchen and have you some coffee. That's the next thing. Have you some coffee, have you some tea, have you some hot water with lemon, hydrate yourself. Do those things still. You are still providing a service. You are still tapping in emotionally and providing your clients with your very service. So get in the groove of things. Bonus tip, use your drive time as motivation to do something meaningful. Now, let's say you had a 30 minute commute. What I want you to do is to use that drive time in your home, okay? Use that 30 minute time to journal, pop in the load of laundry, do some meditation, listen to a podcast you enjoy. Have that still be a part of your time. Listen to that book on Audible, that was my thing. You know, still have that drive time experience where you were able to reflect or have prayer or meditation or whatever it is that worked for you, still do that. I think if you do that and you have that time to yourself, you would be amazed at the results simply amazed. Tip two, schedule a break. Schedule a break during the time that you're seeing clients. I mean, I have been in situations where eight to 10 clients a day back to back. And I tell you, looking at the computer screen for hours on end, it seems just as tiring. It seems just as tiring to do this over a screen it could be that we're trying to at least, or I statements, use I statements. It could be that I myself have found that I may overexert myself because I'm wanting things to come off naturally and as it would if I were in session with them. So it can be very tiring. Take a break. Now, I don't care what your job say. Moving on. <laughs> don't do don't 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 listen to that part don't listen to that part <laughs> okay take a break walk around the block take a walk outside in your backyard if you can check the mailbox even if you don't have mail you probably have an amazon package though mm -hmm. i saw you mm-hmm Take a trip just to the mailbox alone, okay? Walk, 
10 times to see if you can go back and forth to the mailbox and see if that doesn't help at all. You would be simply amazed at how refreshing it could be after staying in the house all day, after being stuck inside, after being on the computer for hours on end, take a break, get you some fresh air, eat an apple, eat some yogurt, eat a banana, have something quick, eat some toast, make a smoothie, do something, take a break. Tip three, get on at least five minutes before your session is to start. Now, I understand that may sound like common sense, but we have all run over sessions, okay? It can be particularly painstaking to have technical interruptions that may not have gone into the session time if we were there five minutes before. This actually brings me to my next tip, number four, which is to assume that there are technical issues. Now, I had issues with this because if clients weren't on their session, if they didn't show up for the televisit after a certain amount of time, I would usually mark them as a no-show. And I just sat back and waited for things to unfold because what I would realize is that they were actually having technical issues and that's why they weren't showing up for their appointments. So be mindful of that and what usually would happen is by the time they reached me or my extension then it's 15 20 minutes after session because they're had they've been trying for five minutes and then by the time they give me a call maybe it's 10 minutes and by the time they actually reach me that's another 15 minutes they have gone by to tell me that they're having technical issues and it's just a mess. We're both frustrated at this point because we can't seem to log on and that creates a situation that just simply does not have to be. Now, I know what you're thinking. Most people are probably saying, well, why didn't you just call the client when they were late? And for myself, I usually try to uphold a certain level of responsibility to my clients. They know that they're due on session at two o'clock and UC is 207. They know that, but what I have found is that I have to call them and I have to ask, hey, are you getting on today? Hey, is everything okay? Are there any technical issues that I should be aware of? What do we need to do in order to make sure that we meet today? And what I've actually found is that when people are late, they know they're late. They didn't intend on coming to session, but since I called them, it's like, oh, I forgot. So I actually found that either clients forgot about the session or they weren't planning on attending. Only a few times have I seen it where the clients were actually having technical issues and they couldn't get on. That's happened before to me, but I can maybe two or three times that's, hap that's happened to me. Tip four, get an internet booster, okay? now. I have seen this on Amazon. It was actually recommended to me by a colleague of mine and they say that it has been amazing. Technical issues, technical issues, technical issues. We can't escape them. It is what it is. We are using the internet to connect with our clients. So we have to know that sometimes there will simply be times where there is no internet connection or at least a poor connection. And these internet boosters run for about $30. I'm actually looking into getting one. So if any of you are using them, have used them, let me know how they work for you. Number five, remind and repeat. Again, we have been in this pandemic for almost a year and telehealth is no exception. We have been rushed into telehealth, many of us, and it can be challenging. It can be particularly challenging to remember all of the telehealth etiquette, if you will, after you've gotten relaxed, you're in your room, and I'm speaking from the client's perspective, they're in their room or they're in a space that feels comfortable for them, and so they take their phone with them to the restroom or their computer with them to a place where you didn't want them to go, okay? And we have to remind them of telehealth etiquette, if you will. Now, parents are teachers, they're doing virtual school, they have other responsibilities, they are working from home, they have other things going on and their life does not stop. I'm not saying that it does. What I'm saying is that we may have to remind them to ideally not drive during our session time or not be in a store during our session time or not be in the restroom or not be putting in your dentures 
during our session time. And I don't know that they shouldn't do that, but it's the fact that we want to, we want to, it happened to me. It happened to me. And I am speaking about things that have happened to me. So I know the point is that people get relaxed and we're human. We're going to get relaxed. That's totally common. It makes sense. What I'm saying is don't be surprised if you have to remind telehealth etiquette or what you expect of them as their practitioner and what they should be expecting of themselves as clients. We want telehealth to mimic as closely as possible to meeting in session. That's up for debate. I, I don't know. The jury is still out on that one, at least for me. Okay. So that is what I have. Don't have any more. Those are my tips to being an online therapist. Get it going in 2021. Let's do better than we did in 2020. The best is yet to come. Thanks so much for watching. And let me know down in the comments, how has telehealth been for you? Are you tired of it? What do you think about telehealth? How's it going? Let me know. Thank you. Bye-bye.